Hello, this is Pastor Al, and this is How to Marry God's Best. I remember um, I asked my mother if she prayed before she got married, and she laughed. And she said, the uh, Catholic Church didn't teach us to pray. And uh, my mom's uh, marriage only lasted a year and a half, and, uh, and they were in divorce court. And um, my wife, on the other hand, my wife, she prayed and she fasted every Tuesday and every Thursday. And um, I had an inward witness um, for two weeks. I knew I was going to meet my wife, and one day it was so strong I stood up and I said out loud, Lord, I, am I going to meet my wife today? And I went to this little church that only had 12 members, and I taught there on how to witness. And uh, there was one young lady there, and uh, we got married. And I knew in my heart that I was going to meet my wife that day. And and uh, it's very necessary to pray. God will guide you if you ask him prayer. It says in Proverbs 19:14 that a prudent wife is from the Lord. So if God will give you a prudent wife, you have to pray to God because the Bible says in, in Matthew 21, 22, all things whatsoever you shall ask for in prayer, believing you shall receive. So you have to ask God in prayer and believe. Um, a lady um, ran away from home and uh, shacked up with some guy and uh, they had a couple children and it was years and years and years and uh, the uh, guy would run out with other women and, uh, and uh, it took them 25 years before they got married. And if you want to stay on track and avoid a lot of hassle and a lot of pain, it's uh, really, really important to marry someone who is established, who's strong in the church. You can read the list of qualities there in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, the qualities of an elder. And you should, you should believe God that God will provide the absolute best. When I was uh, 30 years ago, when I was witnessing um, in the streets along where I lived, I met this one lady and she told me that she had been carrying around a burden of guilt for two years because she had lived with her um, her fiance before they got married and even though they got married she still had this condemnation this guilt and so it's better just to avoid fornication and adultery because you don't know what type of um, ramifications it will have I met another lady who had been uh, living in retirement homes for 20 years she had abandoned her her husband with three little children to go have an adulterous relationship with a guy and she was living in so much guilt she she didn't think that he would take her back, so she she never did. She just kept living um, in one retirement home to, and, and then another. And uh, um, B and K, they were living together in sin. And uh, K, even though she was uh, even though she was very um, young, a, a young person in her twenties, she had a stroke and almost died. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter thirteen, verse four, that. Uh, Hormongers and adulterers God will judge. So we need to be sure that we keep ourselves in the will of God so that judgment won't come on us. The world will confront you to stay single. I remember when I went to go get married and uh, the world told me, about five people at, my, at the company I was working with told me not to get married. It was better to stay single. And uh, that was actually very bad advice. And the Bible says that in the last days that they will forbid to marry. And I didn't know what that was until I went to get married, and all these people came up to me and tried to convince me that it was a that it was a bad idea. And so, if we read the Bible in Proverbs twenty four twenty seven, it says to establish your career, your agriculture in the field first, and then get married. Well, in those days, ninety seven percent of the people were farmers. So when it says to establish your career, your agriculture first in the field, then get married. It was saying establish your job first and then get married and build the house. And so it's very, very important that you marry somebody who has a college degree, who can drive, who can hold down a professional job. If you marry somebody, um, if you, if you marry, get married as a teenager, you're going to struggle because the, the responsibilities of marriage, like paying the rent and paying the bills and paying for the, um, for the medical bills and, and car registration, car repairs, um, car insurance, all those things are, are pressure and it prevents people from paying for their education. So I recommend that you establish your career first, get your college degree, and then get married. And you have to make it happen by aggressive faith. If you just think that, uh, 
that God's best is going to fall on you, the devil doesn't want it to happen, and he will he will do everything in his power to prevent you from um, from meeting the right people. And we say that um, women are suckers for men in a suit and a fancy car, and the reason for this is some guy who is um, who is more mature will come to church driving a nice car, wearing fancy clothes, you know, and um, and. Uh, and the, the ladies will see this as a sign of maturity and they will marry these people. And then the younger Christian guy, he tends to be the guy that is, is he's so spiritual that he's not of any earthly good. And so we need to, as Christian men, we need to wake up to the fact that, that supporting a family is a responsibility and we need to be able to establish our career and be prudent and uh, be spiritual and, uh, and be, the, be, be the head of the household. Now my advice to the ladies is don't marry a guy unless he's established in his career, unless he can support a family, unless he, unless he can be a provider, um, a protector and a pastor. I, my advice to the ladies is you should pass it up because you're going to save you a lot of pain and struggle. Um, once you get married and you have to pay the rent, that takes a lot of money out of a salary and there isn't much to left over. So if you're not established, if he's not established in his career, you're going to have a struggle. 54% of the divorces in America are fought over money. I'm not having enough money. So my advice to the guys is that if the lady seems um, too choosy, that you have to realize that if a, a woman, she knows if she marries the wrong guy, she's, uh, she's, she's, uh, she's ruined for life. So. Um, so don't be amazed if the if the guy if the ladies are too choosy, and so now what turns off a Christian guy or Christian gal is actually the same thing in reverse. If a if a if a girl says, if a young if a young lady says, oh I'm not a housewife, you can't turn me into housewife. I could never be a cook or I could never um, clean the house. That will turn off a Christian guy because Christian guys are hearing in the church that a woman's position is, is to raise the children. And um, what turns off a Christian girl is just the opposite. To tell the um, to tell the lady that uh, you want her to be a housewife, or to raise children. That that's a very scary to a young lady who's never um, who's never raised children. And so what we need to do is we need to take the um, we need to learn from the stewardesses. Stewardesses have the least amount of divorce in America, and the reason for that is. They talk with a lot of people, they, they meet a lot of people that are traveling back and forth going to work who are consultants, who have um, their masters in business or accounting and are working in the business field that are making good money. And since they talk with a lot of people, they tend to, to date the people that have good personalities so that they're balanced in their personalities and, they, um, and they're established in their career, they make good money and somebody who can provide for the home that's a, a real plus and so that's why their marriages tend to last the longest and have the least divorces because they marry somebody who's balanced in their personality and somebody who's established in their career and that can provide for the home so they have less stress afterwards after they get married um, so uh, make um, be friendly with a lot of people um, Make a lot of friends, but um, don't get involved with somebody um, before you meet the person that's suitable for to make the um, right, um, right, right uh, husband or, or wife. Um, this has been Pastor Al. Have a nice day. Bye bye.